The movie starts with a powerful and intense scene where a woman named the Bride is brutally attacked and left for dead by her former allies who are members of a group called the Deadly Viper Assassination Squad during her wedding rehearsal. In the first chapter of the movie, we see the Bride arriving outside a typical suburban house in a vibrant yellow and red pickup truck. She confidently walks to the front door and rings the bell. However, a sudden memory shows a past time when the Bride was attacked by one of her enemies Bernita Green. Without hesitation, as soon as the door opens, the bride punches Bernita's face hard. What follows is a fierce fight, starting with just fists and then getting more intense with knives. The tense battle is briefly stopped by the arrival of a school bus carrying a little girl named Nikki. Both fighters hide their weapons, pretending everything is normal despite the chaos. They reassure Nikki, and the bride mentions her own child, who would be Nikki's age. Bernita sends Nikki away, and it becomes clear clear that Bernita is a member of the Deadly Vipers, known as Copperhead, while the Bride is also a member called Black Mamba. The Bride announces her plan for revenge, but promises not to hurt Bernita in front of her child. They agree to settle their fight later, however, in a sneaky move, while making breakfast for her child, Bernita tries to shoot the Bride with a hidden gun. The attempt fails, and the Bride quickly ends Bernita's life with a well-aimed knife throw. Nikki sees her mother's death, and the Bride feeling sorry but determined, apologizes to Nikki, explaining that her mother deserved it. She advises Nikki that if she struggles with what happened as she grows up, she should find the bride. Then the bride goes back to her pickup truck and marks Vernita's name off a list of people she plans to kill. The bride covered in blood. Four years ago in a wedding chapel in El Paso, the police were looking into a horrific crime. The sheriff arrives and learns that there's been a brutal killing, leaving nine dead, including the bride, her soon-to-be husband, the minister and his wife, the attendees, and even the person playing the piano. The sheriff walks around, making remarks about the gruesome scene. He stops near the bride and comments on her beauty. He quickly realizes that the name she was using, Arlene Machiavelli, is a fake one. As he bends down to examine her more closely, she suddenly, maybe accidentally, spits in his face. We then see her being rushed to a hospital where she falls into a deep sleep. A well-dressed blonde woman walks through the hospital, whistling a tune. She finds a locker room and comes out dressed as a nurse with a red cross patch over one eye and carrying a tray with a needle. A caption identifies her as Ella Driver, a member of the Deadly Vipers, also known as the California Mountain Snake. She stands over the sleeping bride and says that her gift is to let her die peacefully. As she gets ready to inject the needle's contents into the bride's IV line, her cell phone rings. It's Bill who tells her to stop the mission because the bride survived their previous attempts to kill her and it would degrade them. Ella is angry but follows the order and leaves. Four years later, the bride is still in a coma. A mosquito bites her and she wakes up screaming. In a flashback, she sees a gun aimed at her and a bullet coming towards her in slow motion. She starts to feel her body, first noticing the metallic sound of her skull and then feeling the emptiness where her baby used to be. She screams again and cries uncontrollably. When she hears footsteps approaching, she lies back and pretends to be still asleep. A hospital worker comes in, accompanied by a big truck driver. The worker explains that for $75, this beautiful woman is available for whatever the truck driver wants. The man pays and is told that he can do anything as long as he doesn't leave any marks. The worker leaves and the man climbs on top of the bride. As he starts to kiss her, she bites his lower lip off, causing a lot of blood. He's left unconscious or possibly dead. The bride tries to get out of bed but falls as her legs won't hold her up. When she hears the worker coming back, she grabs a knife and hides behind the door. He comes in and is shocked at the bloody scene in the empty bed. She cuts his heel and he falls to the floor, then she slams the door into his head. She demands to know where Bill is. She reads the name Buck on the worker's name tag, which brings back memories of his earlier attacks on her. She hits him a few more times with the door, possibly killing him, then searches him for his car keys. The keychain has unique words written in pink. Using a wheelchair, the bride manages to get herself to the underground parking lot. 
She spots Buck's yellow truck because she remembers the words on the back of it. She pulls herself into the truck and begins the slow process of regaining control over her legs. A glimpse of the rest of the Deadly Vipers gang introduces us to Oren Ishii, also known as Cottonmouth, who is now the leader of the Yakuza in Tokyo. The story of Oren Ishii. The movie traces Oren's life from when she was nine and saw her parents get killed. Her dad, an American soldier, tried to fight off several Yakuza members but was killed. The Yakuza boss, a creepy old man, also violently kills Oren's Japanese mom. The last of the man's crew sets a fire in the room, causing the house to burn down. Oren survives and gets revenge for the murders when she's 11 in a very bloody way. Using the man's attraction to young girls to her advantage and she becomes a top-notch killer. Meanwhile, 13 hours have gone by and the bride can use her legs again. So she starts her journey of revenge. We see her taking a flight to Okinawa, the man from Okinawa. The bride walks into a sushi bar in Japan where a long scene unfolds with the cheerful bartender and some funny antics with his helper. Things turn serious when she tells the bartender that she's looking for Hattori Hanzo. She says she needs a Japanese sword to kill vermin. He takes her to his attic, where he keeps a collection of katana swords he's made. When she tests one, he says they're not for sale, and he's promised not to make any more death tools. She says her vermin is a former student of his, and he correctly guesses she's talking about Bill. He agrees to make her a sword, which will take a month. He suggests the bride use that time to train. A month later, we see Hanzo inspecting the new sword, which he thinks is his best work. He gives it to her in a small, serious ceremony where he admits he broke his personal vow not to make any more swords, but did so because he supports the bride's mission. Clash at the House of Blue Leaves The movie goes back to Oren and shows her as the newly chosen leader of the council of all the crime bosses. When one opposes her election because of her mixed race background, she immediately cuts off his head and warns the others never to insult her heritage in any way, or they'll meet the same end. We meet Oren's second in command, French Japanese lawyer Sophie Fatal, another one of Bill's students, her young bodyguard Gogo Yubari, a ruthless killer dressed in a plaid school uniform, and Johnny Mo, the leader of her muscle men, the Crazy 88. We then see the bride arrive in Tokyo, dressed in yellow and riding a yellow motorcycle, while Oren and her entourage are on their way to a restaurant. The bride sees Sophie in her car and remembers Sophie calmly answering a call on her phone while the bride and her group were being attacked. Oren and her close associates get to the restaurant and are led upstairs to a private dining room by the overly polite owners. At the bar, the bride sits quietly and observes. Oren and her group are having a good time when Oren feels a threat. She throws a small dart with a red tassel through the paper wall, which sticks in a beam in the hallway outside, surprising the bride who is near the private room. Oren sends Gogo to check the area, but the bride has hidden herself on the ceiling and Gogo doesn't spot her. The bride goes into the bathroom and, while taking off her leathers, hears the old Langston, the unique ringtone of Sophie's phone. With Sophie following her, the bride loudly announces her presence from the restaurant floor, causing Oren and her group to rush out onto the balcony to see. She cuts off one of Sophie's arms, and chaos breaks out as the customers and staff run away. Although Oren sends her lieutenants down one by one, or in groups to kill the bride, all of them end up being sliced apart. The last defender is Gogo, who fights the bride's sword with a ball and chain, in a brutal fight that ends when the bride kills Gogo by sticking a broken table leg with nails in her temple. Before Oren and the bride can start their fight, the sound of motorcycles is heard, and the crazy 88 rushes in. The ensuing battle of one against many is long and tense and bloody, but in the end, only one of the 88 is left, the youngest, and the bride sends him away with a spanking. She tells the defeated Crazy 88 that they can leave, but they must leave their cut-off limbs behind because they now belong to her. She also orders Sophie to stay outside in the snow. The bride and Oren engage in a long and evenly matched sword fight. At the start of the fight, Oren questions the origin of the bride's sword. The bride wins by cutting off the top of Oren's head before her eyes. Oren apologizes for an earlier insult and comments that the sword must indeed be a Hanzo. Later, the bride crosses Oren's name off her list. 
The bride puts Sophie in a car and drives to a place where she can roll her down a snowy hill to a hospital. The bride begins to torment Sophie, severing her other arm to get information about the location of the other Vipers and Bill. As the bride makes her death list 5, we see Sophie speaking to someone whose face is hidden but is obviously Bill. She informs Bill that under the threat of losing more limbs, she has revealed everything she knows to the bride. She makes it clear that the bride let her live just so she could tell Bill face to face everything that happened and warn him that they would all be dead soon. We then hear Bill's last words asking Sophie if the bride knows her daughter is still alive. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our recap. Like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.